had to adapt. Um, Melissa, the medical director, who's right here, um, who's also my sister, hence why she's here, um, <laughs> been adapting by doing virtual consultations and having time to chat to people and plan out their treatment plan for when we go back but I mean it's just it's a little frustrating because they're, they're like yep yeah, yep yeah, this is great this is great when can we get started and obviously we don't know so yeah I definitely can't wait to be back with real yeah. interaction and completely like Lucia said I think it's I think it's dangerous that you know some people are becoming really agoraphobic and they say other friends of my mother who's saying they, they won't ever leave the house again they've got so used to being in the house they've not left the house for 10 months and they, they think they probably won't ever again i mean it's like, it's crazy isn't it? yeah, yeah which, which i mean this is going to uh, fit in very very nicely with what we are going to talk about you know mental health and uh, mm -hmm. and mental health in women um, Karen, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Hi. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so, very much. Thank hi, everyone. Hi. hi, hi, hi. And um, Tanya, how? Tell us, Tanya, are you with us? I'm, I think I've lost you. Tanya, are you there? Tanya, are you there? I'm Tanya? right here. I'm right here. Yes, Tanya. So uh, tell us, how is, I mean, how? How are things in uh, in New Delhi with regards to the to the lockdown and the the pandemic in general? And you as a doctor, I mean, how uh, you know from your point of view, how are you living? How are you experiencing all of this? You know, to be really honest, Maria. First of all, thank you for asking me that question. Um, I've been hearing a lot of your opinions, uh, Susanna. You know, Lucia. If I if I'm getting your names right. Lucia, um, yeah. And it's very, yeah, it's very interesting to see how all of us are the same, even though we're in different parts of the world. So with us, it's a little different. I would say it's a blessing to have a lockdown when, you know, you have to <laughs> you contaminate it. Why? Because in our country, they had herd immunity, which means there was no lockdown, which means that the, that the death rate for us was very, very high. You know, it's like, it's like when you live in a neighborhood today, as of now, we've all lost a member of our family to COVID. And that's very, very um, alarming as a situation. So I think when you, when you are in the lockdown, we tend to feel like, you know, we're not meeting our friends. We, we, know, we don't know if you're going to see a new normal anytime, but it's better. It's, it's, it's like prevention is better. You know, it's, it's definitely better when you see it from another point of view. Because for us, we had, so the government planned herd immunity um, was the plan for them. They wanted everybody to have immunity and everybody to have COVID, which meant my family had COVID, I had COVID, my parents had COVID, everybody had COVID. It's almost like every family, about 75% families in Delhi, New Delhi, have had COVID. Yeah. So when you check the death rate, it's equally that high. So all of us are severely affected already. So when you compare yourself to that, Guys, it's far better to, to be safe at home. Yeah. You know, so so it's a blessing for something like that. But what I'm seeing right now is that now we have like very, very, very less cases, like about hundred. That's it. And I think one thing that I have to say about the government is they've really stepped up, really stepped up, because they've realized that we have no other option. You know, so the vaccines come out, everybody's getting vaccinated. Uh, prevention is super, super high. You know, today was the first time we, I went to a restaurant, you know, in, in what, a year? And I honestly had a blast. But the prevention measures were really, really good. So, you know, everybody is adapting. But I think it'll be a new normal. It won't be like uh, anything before 2020, but it'll no. be a new version of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Nothing will be, uh, absolutely nothing will be the same. And, uh, you know, the, the, the best is yet to come. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet for what is coming. We haven't seen anything yet. So, um, and yes, the best is yet to come because we are going towards, I know it seems very dark. And as they say, you need to go through the darkest darkness <laughs> before you can actually see the light. Um, oh, that's, we have another guest coming in. And, and that is true. I mean, we are still going through that uh, final bit of darkest darkness, if that is even correct to say, before we can actually see the light. But that light that we are going to see, it is not going to be anything like 
we have seen nothing that we have seen before. I mean, it's going to be a completely different world, a completely different reality, a completely different, a completely different, you know, mind states, and 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 on. And what I mean, completely different, a new earth. Let's say I didn't want to use the word. I didn't want to sound like, you know, this new agey type of person. But this is what we are going, you know, towards. And um, and it, you know, it is done. I mean, there's no going, no going back. I mean, you know, it's just. But nothing would be the same again. Nothing is going to be the same again. With regards to India, um, I would say that, as far as I understood. Reading a little bit here and there is that India now has has come to a point where and I'm talking about the government. And correct me if I'm wrong, where they have said we are now fed up. We don't want to hear other governments any longer. We are going to take this in our own hands and we are going to deal with this our way. And I think that is a very good step for the Indian government. Uh, they are moving very slowly away from, you know. The, the 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 mental abuse, let's say, of the other governments, and hopefully, you know, we are all going to follow uh, suit. To be to be honest, so I think that is why things look a bit, you know, light in in India now. You're saying that the death rate has now decreased, and I think that is why that, that I think because the government is now, let's say, fed up. I say okay. You America stay there, you England stay there, you Europe in general stay there. We are going to take everything in our hands. But anyway, I think we're going a bit like away from um, <laughs> Consuela. Just let you in. Hi, Consuelo. Are you there? Hi. Hi, Consuelo. Yes, she's here. Consuelo. Hi, darling. Consuelo. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much for. Um, participating all of you honestly thank you thank you so much so uh, Karen is there anything you can tell us before we go into uh, today's topic how is the third lockdown treating you oh yeah <laughs> and your mental health um not too bad a bit better than the first because my the first I had my two kids trying to keep them occupied the whole time um they're in nursery this right. time not every day but they are there a couple of days so there is a bit of respite and I don't know where everyone is in the UK the playgrounds are open during this lockdown and they weren't last time and that makes a massive difference so we are just at the park all the time so okay. yes yeah, definitely not as bad as the first but I'm over it I'm ready for it to be done <laughs> yeah it will be it will be yeah, it will be yeah. not too long now it will be yeah. Consuelo, hi. Consuelo is talking from Italy. Um, all the rest we have England, London, and New Delhi. And Consuelo is is there from Naples. Consuelo, how is the pandemic treating you and the the third lockdown? How's the situation in Italy? In my Italy. <laughs> Your Italy, right? My Italy. Uh, in my Naples. Uh, the situation in my region. Um, it's not very well at the moment so we are in a, in a local not local lockdown but we have some restrictions so we have to be at home at 10 p.m we have to wear masks masks um, every time we go out even if we go for a walk and um, but uh, we are allowed to move to a second region uh, if we are the owner of a house so at least we can move and uh, we can take our children to breathe some fresh air uh, yeah. in the mountain, for example. So it's, 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 I think it's the same like all over the world. Yes, yes, thank you. Too much, we, I mean, it's enough. <laughs> enough, you know, it will end soon. Life. Yes. Lindy, how about you? Hi, um, so I'm in England and yes, it has been uh, difficult. I was in Greece actually in the first lockdown, but I How thought it would be better to come back here. No, actually, I, it was quite a heavy duty lockdown there. So I came back here and I just do things each day to make sure I stay upbeat, upbeat and I can teach online. So it hasn't been a major um, issue. 
Perfect. And go for walks with friends and just really make sure that each day I try and do things that are very positive um, for myself and the people I know. I've just really made a decision to do that. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. I mean, the, 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 the message of the aim of this meeting today is just to um, send a message out there for all the other ladies who let's say are not as lucky as we are in the sense that they're not maybe uh, as strong, um, you know, and uh, they're a bit vulnerable. Um, women who were already going through tough moments before. And of course, now with this pandemic, you know, they feel even more, uh, mm. you know, like it's the end almost the end of the world for them. So the aim for today is to, 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 to give them a message of strength. Uh, and me personally, as a mindset coach and as a healer, I see these lady, ladies all the time. And, and actually I see uh, an increase uh, of, I, I need to find the right words here, because as I was saying before, when you talk about mental health, people, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, all, the, all of you who are in uh, working with in mental health, people always tend to think that mental health is the very serious issue. You, you, you have something seriously wrong with your brain. Or it is not the case. Mental health is just, you know, women or men, in, in this case, we're talking about women who uh, don't love themselves enough or don't, don't, don't take care of themselves, whether it's physically, whether it's mentally, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually, you know, it's all of different things uh, uh, together. And then, you know, and, and, and I've seen that and I see, I keep on seeing this in ladies a lot, which is a paradox if you think about it, because nowadays in today's society where the woman is, you know, uh, produced to be so strong and women now have the best positions, women now have, uh, earn lots of money and they own their own homes and things like that. It is very, very uh, actually uh, strange to see how many women are uh, more and more are suffering from, uh, you know, um, low self-esteem, uh, low self-love, low self-respect, uh, no self-confidence uh, whatsoever. And these, these issues are, in, you know, I mean, I see them on a daily basis with my, uh, you know, with my past clients, with my uh, current clients. And, you know, and this is what I would like to do today is I would like to say to these ladies that it doesn't matter how many setbacks you may have.